So let me show you the power of spreadsheets. And this is a Google Sheet template for inventory management. And let me tell you, this is the best inventory management Google Sheet template or Excel template that you will get your hands on. This Google Sheet template I've designed and I have integrated it with the sales register, the purchase register, the vendor list, the vendor master, the item master. So it's completely automated. You enter whatever you purchase, whatever you sell, you add new vendors, your inventory, your stock information gets automatically updated and you get the reports that you need to control and manage your stock levels. So let me take you through a demo. This inventory management template, it's a Google sheet template, but you could go ahead and download it as an Excel file if that is what you're more comfortable with. But Google Sheet helps you share access with your entire team and they could all simultaneously work on this one template to take control of your inventory and manage it smartly. Now this template has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sheets, the dashboard, the inventory, the item master, the PO register, the sales order register, the vendor master, and the vendor list. The description is given there, but I'll just take you through. So this is the dashboard where you get the entire report. So anytime you get to know what is the inventory value? So this would be in your currency. I've kept it as a number format because the sheet will be used by people living in different countries, somebody in US dollars, somebody in pounds, somebody in Indian rupees. So you could change that to a currency format, but that's the value of the inventory. This is a sample inventory sheet for my company. This is where you need to enter your company name. So when you get the blank template, once you download this, you can enter your company name here you'll get the inventory value here. So right now it's 12,787. And there are 10 items that this company manages and two of them are due for reorder. And the company would need to spend 874, it's dollars or pounds depending upon your location to reorder these two items. And then you get a nice month on month purchase and revenue trend. You also have a graphical representation here. It looks beautiful. And when you update the data, you will see a trend of how much you are spending every month on purchasing and stocking your inventory and how much are you selling every month, your revenue. And then we have the risk meter, as I would say, because if you are purchasing, if you're manufacturing, it's okay because you are getting things from your own manufacturing uh, facility or factory into your uh, goods go down. But if you're buying it from vendors, there's a risk meter which tells you that do you have more than one vendor or supplier for each product? So this company has 10 items and they have only one supplier, only one vendor for four items. And they have about two to three vendors for six items. So here it's important to have more than one vendor, one supplier for every item because then you could control the cost, you could negotiate better. And in case of one supplier is unable to provide goods to you on time, you have backup suppliers. This again is a very important critical report which you won't get in other uh, inventory spreadsheets or Excel templates. And then here, is a nice item wise analysis. So this is a drop down, which is linked to the item master. You just need to go ahead and select the item that you want to review. And you know that, okay, this is item number BM001. It has two vendors. Okay, not just one. The minimum cost per unit for you to buy is 12.29. The average is 12.64. The maximum is 12.99. Reorder level is 20. The present stock is 90 and the item is not discontinued. If you go ahead and change it, if you make it to BM002, these things would automatically change. So again, this item also has two vendors. The minimum cost price is 29, average is 29.25, maximum 29.5, reorder level 20, present stock 30. So you could go ahead and have a quick overview of every item that you have in your inventory. So this is just an item level report, but this is the main sheet the inventory sheet, which this template is all about. Now in the entire template, any column with the blue header, 
is a formula driven column. So you won't need to go ahead and make manual changes there. Just be careful. Don't edit cells in columns with a blue header. Those are all formula driven. So the inventory sheet, as you could see, is completely formula driven. You only have to enter the item number. The item name gets picked up. So if I delete this, this gets blank. I need to enter the item number BM001. It pulls up from the item master. This is the item master, which I will show you. The stock location is what you have to enter. Reorder level is also calculated automatically. In case if the item is due for reorder, you'll have a red highlight saying reorder. So you get the alert that, okay, you have to place the order. Cost per unit, again, comes from the item master. Sales price comes from the item master. Starting quantity is what you'll have to enter. Once you start using this template, for the first time, you have to enter the starting quantity. If it's a new item that you're adding, you just need to maintain zero. Then the purchase quantity, how many more you have ordered, it comes from your PO register. Sales comes from the sales register and that calculates your current end stock. So it's starting quantity plus PO quantity minus sales quantity. And it calculates the current value of that item depending upon the minimum of the cost per unit and the sales price. For example, in sometimes you may have a product that's been lying in your stock, but it's not doing well, and you want to get off, uh, sell it off on a discount. So you go ahead and you reduce the price of the item. So let's say we make it 8.99. Then the value of the inventory will be calculated based this, not on the higher cost per unit. So this takes the minimum of this and tells you the value of your current inventory item wise and also the overall value, which you also get to see here. Then you have the reorder level, which again comes from the item master, the lead time, how much time does it take for your supplier to go ahead and give you and supply the product to you. Then you have the MOQ, minimum order quantity. So the reorder level might be 20, but what is the MOQ as whatever your agreement is with your suppliers and whether the item has been discontinued. If it's been discontinued, it will show a red yes. And then you have the amount that you have to spend to reorder that particular item. So this inventory sheet is completely automated. You just need to enter the item number, the stock location, and the starting quantity. Everything else is automatically calculated and picked up from the item master, the PO register, and the sales order register. And then again, you have the counters here, the item count due for reorder, and the reorder value. And then you have the item master. This is where you, another thing in the inventory sheet, suppose if you enter by mistake, if you have multiple items and you go ahead and you make a duplicate entry, then the item, all the entries will get highlighted in red. So even by mistake, you will not go ahead and make duplicate entries in the inventory sheet. Another cool feature of this Google Sheet template. Then we have the item master. So any items that you have and the new items that you introduce, you'll need to go ahead and update it here. So you have the item number, the item name, the description, the cost per unit, the sales price. Uh, once you discontinue an item, you just need to go ahead. It's a drop down. So mark it as yes reorder level, the lead time, the MOQ, and the vendor count gets picked up from the vendor master. So this is the vendor master. This is actually a very useful sheet because this is a combination of item and vendor. So here you get to know how many vendors you have for each item. So let's say if we go ahead and we use the drop down and we want to look at BM001, the red stapler, so we have two vendors for it, Acme Corp, Pesto LLC. Uh, for Acme Corp, the MOQ is 50, Pesto LLC it's 40, cost per unit 12.99, 12.29, the same lead time. So when placing a new order, that is when you get to use the, the vendor master, make a drop down here, and then you decide who should you buy it from. Obviously you will first contact 
the supplier with the lowest cost per unit and the lead time or a combination that would be your preference order to make an order. So here, the vendor master, the item name comes from the item master. And here's the vendor list because here you have a drop down. This drop down comes from the vendor list. So anytime that you add a new vendor, let's say I'm going to add a new vendor today. So let's say Nitesh. I am my name is Nitesh. So I'll add Nitesh Enterprises. Contact person is Nitesh. Uh, email, phone number. Just enter the details so you know who your vendors are. So now if I go to the vendor master. I would see Nitesh Enterprises is there in the dropdown. So that's how it is linked. So you have this one master sheet where you have details of all the suppliers and vendors. And the vendor master is the combination of item and vendor. So you know how many vendors you have for each item, what's the respective MOQ, what's the cost per unit, and what's the lead time. And then the two other important sheets, the PO register and the sales order register. This is the PO register. This is where you update every time that you place an order for the items after you get the reorder level or you add a new item uh, to your company's list. So you have the PO number, the item number, you select the vendor from the drop down, the PO date, the order quantity, the unit cost that calculates the PO value. Then you have the order status. So it's either delivered, waiting, or canceled. Then once the item gets delivered, you enter the delivery date, the quantity, and the month gets auto-calculated for the reporting format. So here, if we see, we have one PO waiting. So BM010, uh, order quantity 10, it's waiting. If you go and look at the inventory, uh, BM010, we have 56 in stock right now. But if we go ahead and we actually receive the delivery, today that is on the 16th of May, we receive 10, then your inventory will get updated. So now it's become 66. That's how it is linked with the PO register. So it keeps getting updated without you having to actually go ahead and update the inventory. You just need to enter the purchase details and the sales details. We'll go to the sales order register. Again, similar to PO register, you have the invoice number, you have the item number, the client who is buying it from you, the invoice date, the order quantity, the list price comes from the item master. But in case if the salesperson wants to offer a discount, you can mention the discount here that calculates the updated sales price and the total amount, which gets reflected in the dashboard sheet as your revenue. Then you have the order status. So it's dispatched, WIP, that is work in progress or canceled. The dispatch date, when it gets dispatched, the dispatch quantity, and that gives you the final revenue and the month gets auto calculated. So again, the sales order register is linked. If you uh, look at it right now, your sales revenue is 1453 for April, 700 for the month of May. And we have one WIP order for item number BM010. So in the inventory right now for BM010, the stock is 66. So, but if we go ahead and the we dispatch the order on the 16th of May, the order quantity is 12, we dispatch 12. So now I have earned a revenue of 250.69 which gets updated in the dashboard. So here's an increase in the revenue and the inventory gets updated 66 minus 12, it's now 54. So you could see how this entire inventory management sheet works like a charm. Everything is linked together from the item master, the vendor list, the vendor master, the sales order register, the purchase order register that lets you get an automated inventory sheet where you know what's the value of your inventory, how many item count is there, how many are due for reorder, and what's the reorder value. You get an alert for items that are to be reordered. You can't make duplicate entries because that gets highlighted in red. So you can't make any errors. Just ensure that all the columns with the blue headers across all the sheets are formula driven. Don't make changes to it. And you have a nice dashboard sheet that lets you monitor the key metrics, your monthly trend of expenses and revenue 
And here's a nice analysis item wise. In case if you get go want to review every item, just go ahead, select it and see the number of vendors, the minimum cost price, the average cost price, the reorder level, and the present stock. And here, since we have seven sheets, I've given a navigation sheet here. So if you want to go to the inventory sheet, just go ahead, click on inventory. It'll take you to the inventory sheet. You want to go back to navigation, click on back. It's there in every sheet. So your very own Google spreadsheet for inventory control, inventory management, can be shared with your entire team. So go ahead, download it. The link is in the description. As I said, the power of spreadsheets to manage your business is amazing. You don't need any software. It's as easy as it could get. And as all my other spreadsheet templates, I have not used any macros, any add-ins, any plugins. The formulas used are the basic formulas like VLOOKUP, SUMIF, COUNTIF, AVERAGE, MINIMUM, SUM, that's all. So even a beginner person can go ahead and customize it if you want. But if you need any help, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will reply to every comment as soon as possible. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.